Welcome to episode 71 of our Football Manager Hobo to Hero series, I guess. Not a playthrough, there's no end to it, is there? So, um, I'm in the perfect state for this episode. Because I can barely remember what's going on. But that's the usual stuff for real life football managers, isn't it? They're like, this is the next match. Okay, let's deal with it. And then I need a nap. Or maybe two. So I guess this is fairly realistic. Anyway, uh, we will deal with the match um, twice in Kuala Lumpur. City FC, if I recall correctly. Today. And it seems like I did some of the player talks recently. But the last results weren't that impressive. We lost to Harini in the cup, and more importantly to Terengano in the league. That one's really annoying. How did we concede here? We conceded two goals. I didn't want to concede two goals. Well, I think we conceded 14 or something throughout the entire season. Yeah, it's 14 now. So it was 12 prior to the match against uh, Terengano. That's bad. What happened? Let me watch these. We gotta analyze this at some point anyway. I'm I'm not sure if it qualifies as analysis. What I do now though. So cross wide. Misunderstanding between Kamarudin and Diego. Could also have been safe actions here soon, by the way. So chain of mistakes is well Kamarudin, Diego and Chen Susun. I guess that can happen. Also, Kamarudin is not fast. That's an issue there. Looking at it again. I think the first pass out on the wing. Look at that. So, he's mispositioned in a way. Yeah, he's further up the pitch. Or you could also argue maybe uh, Mahasir. Um, well, maybe Mahasir is uh, positioning is the problem here, the issue. Because otherwise it could have been offside. That's it, uh, that's pushing up really high. So let's check Mahasir's pos positioning later on. Then he couldn't really keep up with Lazim. With a little bit more pace that would have helped. That header though is way misplaced. So it ends up with Diego. Yeah. And I have no idea how far. I guess I just wanted him to knock it off somewhere. So, uh, I don't know. His decision making is not good. That could have been the issue here. Oh, is Mahar's ears? Yeah. See. Oh, I got that right. At least I think I did. His positioning as a whole, freaking six points. That's a big issue. That's it. Yeah, well, he's 24. He will learn about positioning going forward. It might just take longer than we have. But in general, he's a decent defender so far. So, uh, mistakes. I, I guess this is that uh, one of those that we need to suck up. I'll live with it. And the other goal, um, in minute 14. Akrula pushes Nor Norazana, which is bad already. And the other one is also Marzia's fault, isn't it? Not really. Uh, oh no. That makes him look really stupid. Akun intercepts the ball, tries to go for a short pass, and. Not the best defensive performance, that's for sure. The two against Harini, they don't necessarily count for the statistics, but not for the league statistics anyway. By the way, it's probably a good idea to watch him. So, this is Mazarin this time. He should be way faster. And this is Amat who loses his man. Also, nobody cheering in the stadium. 
Her mod is known to be very slow. We knew that. So that's probably not something that will repeat in the future. Or not much. I don't think Ahmad will make it at this club, despite the personality and all. Same here, who was that? Who are you? Marzir. Great. So I called out of position, or okay, not marking his man, however you want to phrase it. But given that it's Mazarin, I would probably argue he was out of position. Yeah, not Mazarin. Was it Mazarin or Mahazir? Was it actually Mazarin? I always confuse the two from the names. I mean, that's the wrong situation. Uh, this is our goal. I, I guess we might as well watch it. Hi! Ouch. I don't deserve this. Welcome back. So, we were talking about this one. Yeah, it's Mahazir, isn't it? Of course it is. So Mahazir lost his man here. Uh. So two matches with no good performances by Mahazir so far. If I see that correctly. Hmm. All right. How's it going for you, Chernolet? I thought you weren't around today. Yeah, the normal one, 40. So, 8 hours a day, 5 days a week. That said, um, how do I put this? Well, obviously, there's people that can't do that. Think of, um, I don't know, single, a single parent of a young child, um, or even two or three. Um, they they can't really work forty hours a, a week, because um well they can't really afford the childcare, yeah, on um on on top of that um I don't know uh, how do I phrase this whatever they earn um in for um whilst they are at work um they would uh, throw it out for childcare anyway, so um there's people for those it doesn't make sense to work forty hours a week. It, it just doesn't make sense. But it's often forgotten. So, you know, there's always this, this populist demand or um, something for, uh, uh, I don't know, get the people off the street and get them back into work. To 32? So a four-day a four week, basically? Huh. Good luck with that. You sure you're from the United States? That seems un unlikely. There's stuff swimming in my glass. I don't want to drink that. Well, you know, whatever's going on with my glass, I'll just get a new one. Here, beep. Well, I wouldn't expect otherwise. I don't think something like this would pass in Germany either. 32 hour week. To be fair, um, there's, a, there's a lot of jobs that are um, 39 or 35 or something. Depending on, uh, well, where you work, how you work. So that's 40 hours too. But So, so you have additional breaks, right? But it's that shift work. I, I get something similar exists in Germany too. And um there's also thinking about um maybe it's not gastronomy in, in uh in English. How's it called? I don't know, food industry.
Gastronomy. All right, I got it right. So anyway, in, in gastronomy, for example, um, it's also shift work. And uh, well, if it's, if it's a 12 hour shift, it's a 12 hour shift. You know, you can't throw the customers out if they want to spend their money. So um, yeah, depends. But there's also the, obviously um, some jobs that are part time. Depends on the employer too, I guess. Shall we talk to these? So, apparently Harsey did do really well recently. He's in perfect morale there. I don't think I want to praise anyone um, until, well, right up uh, until the match. So we'll just wait with that. Uh, same here. Well, not really the same here. I just don't want to deal with it. That's that must be living hell, man. I'm trying to. I think I. Well, I know one person that works as a nurse. I think, and they. Um. Well, intensive care nurse actually. I don't know if they still do, but let me just say they look like they need some sleep. Last time I saw them. Yeah. Now I have a new glass, but no water. We will get this. It's been a long week. I'm already making excuses. If I fall asleep in, in front of the stream, um, I need to change the category first. Alrighty. So... As I mentioned earlier, the next league match is against Kuala Lumpur City FC. This is a must win. I expect this to be won. They are 14th in the league. We need to help them get relegated. They obviously want to. It's not about the Champions League qualification spot anymore. Not really. Five point gap. We definitely fucked it up losing against Terengganu, that's for sure. No. But we need to win against Kuala Lumpur anyway. Finish as high as possible. Don't know if there's money involved. Probably not in the league. We just finish as high as possible for the reputation. And then I guess as a secondary effect, there might be some money involved, given that it will increase the reputation. Maybe. Uh, is any of the players... They're all fine, more or less. Nobody's hurt. Is this true? What's going on here? Gotta be kidding me. No current injuries anymore. Something's wrong. All right, this is for the match of the under 19. Shall we play Ahmad and Sting? Well, Sting for sure. I think he can play always. And Ahmad, he's exhausted, so I'd rather not. But in general, I think he should play. Maybe against Kedda. Next, well, I guess on Thursday. So it is next week, yes. Scouting group reward. Well, we don't have an analyst. So there's that. What we do have is this kind of formation of 3-3-2-2. Three, three, two, two. And apparently they have a lot of weaknesses, but also some strength. Goalkeeper's reflexes are good. He's supposed to be a good goalkeeper. I don't necessarily disagree. That's not too bad. And he's a good center back as well as defensive midfielder. Well, he can't be both. He also runs with ball through center. Gets forward whenever possible, argues with officials and brings the ball out of defense. So some sort of aggressive central defender, if you want to put it that way. He's also Australian, Italian and English. Okay. Would you personally journal at want to work 32 hours if you had a choice? Or 35 or whatever? A little shorter shifts, maybe? Oops. 
Do there's no match here. Not there. Kelling Holland is removed from the shortlist. I what? What? Why is Elling Haaland on my shortlist? Sure. Sure. We'll just accept this. This might have happened earlier. For funsies or something. That explains why the scouting budget is gone. What's the ticket price for a Man City match? We probably can't afford that and neither trip to England or wherever they play these days. Alright, alright, alright. So we have this. I didn't really pick up anything other than the formation being annoying. That's sad. I don't think they're too bad. But not great either, and hopefully in really bad morale. Technique seems to be fine. Strength might be a problem. Can't jump. He's not tall and he's not strong. Hmm. He can jump a little bit. And he can't. So there's basically a 1v1. In terms of jumping, if I see that correctly. Yeah, more or less. That's not too bad. It might be an approach. I guess we have Mazarin out on the left. Well, let's skip forward a little bit. And then maybe we can talk to them about their recent matches and their performances there. Morale seems to be fairly high so far. But I guess it will drop a little bit. Oh. We, well, the under-19 won the Piala Biala Belia quarterfinal. All right. Now they are in the semi-final. Not bad. No sports scientist either. So, no. line up. I think we should probably go with what we have and what we know works most of the time. He's still not used to this. He's still not used to being played as a or as playing as a central midfielder. That's annoying, but it's it is what it is. Christopher had a really good match recently, apparently. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been against Terengganu. Great. And now I will probably stick to Bauru for now. He's not great, but Carlos da Costa Lima's worse. I was hoping for some development. I'm, I'm disappointed. Doesn't happen. Here we have Zakaria basically. Might play Abdul Halim, might play Bajrul Hisham. What's he doing? 0.4 last time out, not great. How oh, is he? 7.0. Before we took him off. Mm -hmm. 
And I will stick with Fakrula and Mahasir here, just because the others are worse. I think, at least. Also, form is not that bad yet. In fact, none of these has really bad form. That's uh, good to know. Just, for example, look at Van Lalpeka Guit. His form is really concerning. That's it, he seems to develop a little bit these days. Confusingly. The Costa Lima 6.58. Wow. So these are definitely candidates for the bench. We should offer a new contract to Norman Ancon. Yeah, well, yes. But no. Can't afford this. And it's a very similar story with Mazarin, isn't it? I think we did want to offer some money to him, but he wanted 300 something, uh, something euros a week. That's a bit much. At least, I personally think it is, given the quality of the squad and, uh, well, Mazarin's quality in comparison. Anyone? Nobody's really annoyed just yet by not having a contract. At least, no, that was the wrong menu. This is what it promises. Where is it? Uh, Dynamics Happiness. Here it should be. Somebody's concerned. Nor. With training. With training. Well, then don't. Now has an order to fitness training, of course. That's an interesting player, I think, but also one that is way too expensive for my taste. Compensation might be zero. Estimated wage is way too high. I think we want to wait until he gets released. If he gets released. And once that happens, we will pounce on it. Alright. Well, first of all, welcome back to the stream. How long has it, has it been going so far? Oh seven, oh eight. I'm not sure if I could come up with a player that was relevant back then. What what are you doing? Who are you managing? Welcome back, man. I remember your nick at least. <laughs> but you're right, it's been a while. So you wanna have a wrap up? How how big was PSG back in oh seven oh eight? Okay, well mm, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to assess if this is quite the achievement or not. Obviously, these days winning the league with PSG is probably not that much of an achievement anymore. It's pretty much what's expected. Back in oh seven oh eight. That might have been difficult, I'm not sure. So I, I guess congratulations either way. But I don't know, how big were they back then? And by, by the way, uh, Divivos, let me know if there's a... Uh, I don't know, where, where did you drop out of, uh, of the string? What was the situation back then? So I can give you a wrap up of what happened. At least uh, in, a, in a very rough manner. All right, so they they were already a big club. Yeah, I see. So it's it's an achievement, but it's not like um, a rock bottom club uh, made it to the to the top, right? I see.
Well, in that case, um... That might have been last season. At some point. So... Let me give you this. So, the last season we finished 10th. Um, it, it cannot have been another season because, uh, well... Um, I, I, I guess you, you were in the round, like, um, at, the, at the start of the save. I don't think so. And if you were, I'm, I certainly can't remember. But, um... Well, ever since uh, we got promoted from the Liga M3, we only had one season in the in the Liga Super Malaysia, and we ended that season in 10th. So 10 out of 14, that is. That's not too bad, but we were fighting against relegation, that's true. In a way. So good luck with Atletico, by the way. Mr. Just an Ordinary Canadian. And, um, well, after that season, we... I basically tried to keep the squad together and um, put in some additional improvements. It's not that many though. And well, there's still no money. Like we're cash strapped to. I don't know. We're broke. It's it's just like me in real life. We're broke. Okay. So I'm 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 probably bullshitting a little bit here. I'm not broke, but the club is. Me personally, I, I will probably be fine for now. You know, once you have a job and something. So anyway, um, we are in third uh, spot now. We are third. And the improvements to the squad are primarily, I guess, Elbuck again. He did score 12 goals in 23 matches last season. This season, though, he's been way better. It's starting to drop off a little bit. That said, um... Well, it's counterintuitive, I guess, to play him as a pressing forward on defend. But he did score quite a lot, and it helped out defensively. Uh, we can see that in the league stats. Long-term goals for the club are to get the finances in order, increase reputation, and um, maybe make it to the Asian Champions League at some point. But I think... Um, how do, how do I put this? Um, I, I, tried, I tried to reference the infinite game at this point, um, usually, even though I never read the book. But there's, there's finite games and infinite games. A finite game um, would be something like, um, I don't know, one match of football, if that makes sense. Um, an infinite game would be something like um, challenging um, within a league for a certain position for an infinite amount of time. So it's quite a different approach. I could, for example, say we need to challenge for the title next season. That's a finite game. Or I could argue we want to challenge for the title every season from now on. That's a very different setup because we need to make sure that we're in a state that we end up, I don't know, in the top four every single time. At one point, we will win the title. It's I just can't say when. So um, I'm more... The guy for infinite games, if that makes sense, even though I don't have infinite time. But I usually play like I do. And as a result, I'm I'm having a hard time with goal setting in a traditional way. The goal is to not get the club relegated, stay within the league, and uh, get become more important. If that makes sense. So, yeah, I hope that answers the question. I don't know this person, I don't really care, but sure, let's give him a trial. Jeffrey, who the hell is Jeffrey? That's... That's not too bad, I don't want him though. He's way too expensive. Can't afford that. Subir. Nah. N nah. Terrific domestic signing. Do you look at the wage? I mean... I somewhat agree he's not too bad. And he will be out of contract pretty soon. So we'll shortlist him and move on. Not sure if I can pay him at any point. Uh, there's that. So, um, uh, well... 
this is what you expected as an answer, um, considering gold setting, if it was. Otherwise, a uh, full creature uh, such as the gold. No problem. I mean, I guess in this season, for example, we can try... I, I could give a shout out to Challenging for the title. Why not? I can always try. But there's a five point gap and it's not that many matches anymore. And to be honest, we didn't look great recently, so... But I would do that anyway, right? You always want to finish as high as possible. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so the challenge for the title also means we should do the daily business uh, in the most appropriate manner whatsoever. And that would be winning against Kuala Lumpur City FC. They are rock bottom of the league, so that's a very easy win. And as we've seen recently, facing Teringanu, who are 8 now, I think they were 10 for something back then. Obviously, we can have our issues with that. Two. So, first of all, they play in this kind of formation. We already realized that they have one central defender that can jump if I can find him. He probably. Yeah, the other ones aren't great. So, floating crosses in might be a good idea. And then there's issues with morale overall. By the way, Mochalil um, finally managed to get over his issues. And now he just wants to leave or at least explore his options at the end of his contract. Which is no big issue for me. So I wanted to sell him anyway. But for now, he's not annoyed anymore. He just doesn't like me. But he accepted the situation. That's alright. I can live with that. So we need a right back, we need a center back. We have a new one, this one. This is Matt Noor, 18 year old youngster. Fairly ambitious. Could be better, could be worse. Kamarudin most likely. So he's hurt, great. Which means we don't really have an additional Defensive midfielder, so I guess Mahazir would need to do in that situation. Make him enemies available as a playmaker-ish type. Trains as a center midfielder on attack duty, though. Not too bad. Good morale. So we'll bring him. Ahmad can play a pass, but not much else. I don't see that many options, though. So Ahmad, Harsi and Goethe are basically done. Um, there's no debate about that. And then um, I, I probably should mention we did a signing for next season. This is uh, Juan Servin. Uh, Servin? I don't know. I knew last time. It's Mexican. There are none is needed. I can't type Mexico, apparently. Because the language is Spanish and it's pronounced... Juan Servin. Juan Servin. Okay, Juan Servin. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm, I'm quite... Um, Impressed by this uh, signing, I would argue, given that he's rather cheap. He signed for, I don't know, 130 euros or something a week. Maybe 150. That's them. High. Yeah, and he's a good dribbler. He's not that fast, but the off the wall movement of 14 is great. Technique and work rate are fine. Stamina is fine. He will be a pain in the backside to deal with, I guess. Also has a good trade. And he comes in as a foreign player, so we will need to get rid of um, Bandla Pico Guido or somebody at some point. Maybe I'm not too. Not, not sure yet. Or McManamy. I don't know. There's also a spot on the bench, and I don't know whom to give it to, so I guess that costs Alima it is. Yeah. 
Because <laughs> Ahmad's not really needed. We don't need two central defenders on the bench, I think. The rest of it, as you can see by the form, they are more or less... Um, I, I guess it's the, the easy choice to pick them in general. So now we will do the really important stuff and talk to them about their training and the last match's performance. That might take a bit, but it is needed. So we'll do this. Not much else to say. Chinsu Sum, great. Good performance in training. There was an unused substitute last time. Oh, that explains a lot. All right. Who's next? Christopher trains well. I mean, I guess that's basically everyone trains well. I'd rather not comment on the passing here. Well, I could. Can I praise his passing here? Three out of three. Does this work? Apparently. Uh, Costa Lima had a really shitty game. I don't like it. So we will criticize him, I think, for the lack of chances created, maybe. He agrees. How's his training? It's not good. Diego, that's fantastic. I didn't expect Diego to train well at some point. But apparently he can. Not much else to say. Elbok, well trained. Did he score in the last match? I don't think he played. Yeah, the match against Harini, we rested him. But Krula wasn't selected either. We rotated a lot in that match. Arce should be on the bench right now. Kamarudin, that's not too bad. That said, the development is concerning. I like the personality and, well, the potential, but... It doesn't really help so far. Not much to say here. Who? Oh. That's a trial list. Mazarin, sure. And perfect. More. Doesn't really train well. McMenemy we had. Mochalil, not really m worth mentioning. He won't play. Zakaria, that's... For his level of play, that's concerning. I'll name. Sure, we we'll praise him here. Amat trains well. With an additional ten years, maybe he will get into the squad. That's the song. Hmm. Passing is okay. I do think I will criticize the lack of chances created, though it's his job in this role. Alright. Whom did I forget? But Rul Hisham, obviously. Form says, well, the tackling is fine. I think we'll praise him for that. Not bad. Who else? Christopher. We've been here. We've been here, so I guess we praise the conduct. Seems like we do. Alright. So can we challenge for the title? Not sure. First of all, we need to figure this out. So we already realized that there's only one central defender that knows how to jump. And it's not the middle one, which is good. It's Mot uh, Shafiq Hisham. All right. Goalkeeper has some issues with the one on ones, a little bit at least. So corner attacks would be helpful. Five points of passing. Can't really shoot from distance, but he does. 
I don't have major concerns here. I don't know what to do here. Other than maybe not closing him down. We don't need to mark him tightly with five points of pass. The two are even worse. So definitely no tight marking here. He can have the ball. Dribbling is very low. Strength is a seven only. Can't really jump. Bravery is low. The issue is, well, it might be a seven bravery, maybe a six. That's not really the case for hard tackles, right? Given that our, um, well, our striker, um, so Elbach will probably not have good tackling. So I'd rather not tackle him hard. Rahim, 10 points of passing. That's rather concerning. Mentals in general are okay-ish. Strength is fairly low for a central defender, I would argue. He's 16 years old. I do think this is a case of a tight mark, actually. Because there's no off-the-ball movement. Well, maybe four points. But we can avoid him being on the ball, I think. Composure results are not that high. So I'd rather mark him out of the match, which means that we have this weird setup with the striker out on the wing, a little bit at least. But we'll do it anyway. So this is Abdul Rami Rahim. I will actually set him up. Mark the guy. I don't want to find out if a 16 year old can ruin my match. The answer is yes. Probably. We'd rather not have that. This guy has lowish bravery too, but the dribbling and the strength are very low. He's also right footed. Very low composure. No good passing. Close down. Tackle at least normal, if not hard. And show to the weaker foot. The weaker foot is the left one, so to the inside, that makes sense. It's fine. Baharudin. A little more dangerous. Off the ball movements. Rather bad. Passing is 9, though. For a supposed. Well, supposedly he's a central defender, but for that role, he's rather okay. So, same here. We would obviously try to mark him out of the match. That said, he's somewhat strong off the ball movements, not that bad. And I can't really imagine we have a player that is supposed to do this. We could obviously use Elbuck and just drop deeper, but Elbuck is up front. So either I pull him back and he plays with 10 points of passes, something, or we just try to mark him tightly, the best we can do. And the midfield will need to be responsible for that somehow. This one is left footed, dribbling slow, bravery is rather low, strength is slow, at least normal tackles here. Show him to the weaker foot. That's same here. This is to the inside. So he will be forced to pass the ball with his superior passing and vision, which are not true. Closing him down. First touch is free, composure is seven. That's also a case of press. And then we have two midfielders. He's interesting, so I would argue he doesn't belong there. Definitely a more defensive-minded player. He does run with the ball through center though and gets forward whenever possible for whatever reason. He's not good at this though. In general, on the other hand, this player is dangerous. I do not know how to deal with this to be honest. We could, well... Hard tackles and stuff are probably not a good idea. Mark him tightly, mm, maybe. I mean, I guess marking him out of the game is the best we can do, but tightly, not really. He's so strong, we don't have anyone in midfield that can do that. So it's, it's more of a tactical thing. We should mark him out of the match, but uh, be five meters away from him. Uh, it's hard to do. We have no idea about the 17 year old. He's a decent finisher. 
Bravery and strength are very low, but the dribbling is high. Not sure how to deal with this. I guess in in physical situations, um, well, he can run, but he can't jump, and he has no muscles either. So. It's very similar here. I don't really know how to deal with these kinds of strikers. Obviously, we could do like hard tackles or I don't know, close them down or something. But both of them have reasonable first touch too. Composure is seven to nine. Composure is eight to ten. Not too bad. They know how to control the ball, and uh, they also know how to play a pass afterwards or take the shot. So closing them down might restrict them time wise, but not by much. That said, morale is absurdly bad overall, which is great. Tired. As a team. Alright. Anything else? The floated crosses I had. We do trap on the inside. Press is still on standard. I'm not sure if that's alright or not. Attacking with is fairly narrow here. We might need to go down the wing. It really depends. Did we have a slow central defender here? Mm, an 8, a 12, and an 8. So no. Definitely not. So we go to the match. Ankun is nervous. Alright, so this is a must win. That's sad. The players didn't win for two matches. In fact, they lost the last two. As a result, I think they need encouragement, despite this being an easy one. That didn't help much. Better? Better. And now I will do a bathroom break and then we'll start a match. Here be. Alright, I'm back. Let's go. We have everything you need. We have a match that is important. We have a bunch of free time. The manager is tired and he has chocolate. So everything's fine. At least that's what I'm hoping for. We'll, we'll be fine. Home away has been a bit sketchy, they say. So maybe lose this one. Eleven seconds into the match. Obviously encouragement is needed. Elbog, come on! He hit somebody in the wall. Guy named Chuma. What's wrong with Mahasir? He's uninterested after the feedback. Are you kidding me? First of her second attempt. Alright. We are still in control of the ball. No, we are not. Yes, we are. Well. That's the one with a good passing, by the way. Not bad. Alright. So we got the ball back. What will he do with it, Mazran? Not a bad pass either. That ends up as a corner. Nice. Well done. Christopher with the corner. 
Mazir doesn't get to the ball, sadly. He did challenge for it though. Christopher, that's offside. I think the creativity in general has been concerning for the first 10 minutes here. There's barely a chance. That's fine. Hold on. Baru finds Elbuck again. Ah, he nearly skipped past the last man. Not bad. weird piece of defending here hopefully nothing happens from this yeah it was offside I thought so Mazarin for Diego, back to Mazarin. Fairly narrow probably doesn't work here, come to think of it. The attacking with. On the other hand, that helps defensively a little bit at least. Not bad, Elburg. We could have had a pass earlier. Baru, Baru Hisham. Back to Zakaria. Immediate pass towards Baru, that's not bad. Does this count? No, it doesn't. How close was it? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Okay. Obviously, that's offside. I'll demand more. This is not acceptable. 12 minutes into the match, one shot, and it was basically nothing. They... He's frustrated. Okay. Well, I do expect more, though, than this. Ankun back to Baru out on the wing. Ankun in the middle loses the ball. Is offside. Yes. Basically, this match it's two teams neutralizing each other. I'm not sure what to do with it. Mazrin. Nice pass for Christopher. Yes. Not. Oh. The last pass was really bad. That, though, was a good shot. Sadly, not well placed. But the chance created, I like that. That's not too bad. Christopher with floated cross. Mm, no, no. This time. I mean, they didn't have a single shot so far. So I guess the performance in the match isn't too bad. That said, our creativity. Leaves a lot to be desired for. And this gets intercepted, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. Mazarin. Christopher. Oh. I guess that was a shot, wasn't it? Even though it was blocked immediately. Huh. Chance is a high quality chance after all. What the hell, Zakaria? Why? Good tackle. Made up for it immediately. Ankun, Bahu. The pace of the passing is good. Or the tempo, I guess. Okay. I thought this was a foul. Apparently it wasn't. Might just be me though. And that's another corner. So I guess we encourage him this time. Even though Mahasir might not appreciate it. He does. Well, finally. 
Christopher. Mm. Not really. That's offside, isn't it? Sure it is. The off the ball movement of the squad is interesting today. Jake Hassim with a long ball. Jäger. Give it back to Diego. That's fine. Okay. He knows how to play a pass. He did. So, going wide in this situation was perfect. This time, it counts. I mean, the match is not the most exciting one so far, but if it gets us the result in the end, I won't complain. And given that we more or less dominate this match, 65% possession, decent pass completion, I don't see much of an issue here. It could be better against the 14th of the league, yes. On the other hand, are there really easy matches in football? So now I have the problem that I'm not sure if I want to praise them already. Just Zakaria. Zakaria way up front. Well intercepted. Bauru, Ilbach, and then nothing apparently. Again. We seem to recover the ball fairly well here. Overall. Zakaria to Christopher Mazarin. Mazarin skips past his marker. Mazarin. In case uh, accidentally anyone watching this uh, later on saw West Ham's match against Freiburg recently, I think it was yesterday. Mazarin's dribble for a second reminded me of somebody. Forget the name, but uh, well, that fifth goal by West Ham was wow. Never seen something like that. Come on, Baru. He hits the post. That would have been the perfect opportunity. For a second goal and some calm in the match. Well, there's enough calm in the match, but I need something for my nerves. And the chocolate doesn't work, so I guess a second goal it will be. Reasonable. Diego doesn't lose the ball, which is fine. Zakaria. What about Relishan? Will Baru find this ball? He does. Not bad. Yes. Nice. Good opportunity for Diego. He knows how to take a long shot. I think it's nine points. He just doesn't know how to finish. A bit weird. There's the first chance for them in the entire match. 39 minutes in. If the quality keep being like this, I think we have a good chance to win this. In the end, Baru... no. It is intercepted by Diego though, just to lose the ball subsequently. Right immediately, basically. Uh. This Baharut in person is dangerous. Okay. That definitely was more dangerous than the last one. Good pass. A rule. Well, book in area.
Mazarin just looking for a pass. Diego, that's better. Ancun, that's even more better. I don't know. I think in general we can be happy with this. But we should probably keep it up. Back Pula, Pavu again. He's a bit misplaced here. Mazarin, there you go. Well, Mazarin doesn't move. No, he does. Ankun. The right wing is wide open. Thank you, Zakaria. Thank you very much. Put it in. That's okay, too. Hmm. Well, there's the half-time whistle. So, a, a little bit wider might have been an idea here, usually. But in general, I think we can be happy with the match so far. Any ideas? Any comments? I think uh, the con controlling the possession is fine. That said, some of the players have substandard performances, so we will tell them. Might be a little bit too much pressure. I still think this is uh, not okay. So, apparently they can stand it for today. Not sure about the rest. I think we'll just keep it as it is. Hope that nobody hurts themselves. There's no real need for rotation just yet. I think most of these played last match, so... Slow and steady. And I think we can do the second half right after the break. Here be. I promised the second half. Let's have one. So, no major issue so far. Obviously, with these kind of strikers, the counter-attacking goal is always a concern. But not if we have the ball. That's a yellow. At least to me it's a yellow. Hoboke again on the ball. Recover. Baru bit the wrong wing for him. But who am I to judge as long as it works? That said, Hillbox heading could do with some improvement. At least hit the goal. Well done. I like the common con uh, cautious passing in the back. I would really fear chinxing it for a second here. Sure, spread it a little bit wider. Mazarin through the middle or not through the middle. Christopher, come on, faster. That's not really cutting inside. You gotta be kidding me. The ball evades the goalkeeper and Ankun hits the crossbar of the empty goal. What the hell, Ankun? Call him. The central defenders didn't do anything. Zakaria could have fouled him. Shinsu Sun definitely could have saved this one. Ow. So Ankun loses the duel. The heading duel. That's okay. Zakaria doesn't, doesn't foul him for some reason. Mahazir, well, I, I guess he doesn't close down the man because Zakaria is on his heel. Uh, that must be a long shot. 
He definitely won the chance here, so he could have saved. I'll encourage them, not sure if it's a good idea. Conceded another goal, that's goal number 15 in the season. I don't want to concede. Elbook. Ends up with Bahu for now. Not bad. Christopher. And back to Bahu. Cuts inside. Bahu with the shot. And it's a good save by Czech Hussing. Well. Statistically speaking, we deserve to win this match. But statistics count for nothing. But goals. Another one. He's uninterested after being encouraged. Christopher Mahazir Uncle. I guess that's all right. Mahazir Zakaria. Why? Why it's Zakaria? You clearly saw that this was a bad opportunity for a path like this. Ahmad and Mazarin wins the heading duel. I think I've had enough in particular of Fakrula's performance so far. Let's give the youngster a try, won't we? He probably won't be much better, but in what match would we play him anyway? So, why not? He's uninterested, but we really need him. Ankun. You had your chance. Maybe McManamy can do a little bit better. A central defender and a midfielder. And we want to score, I'm not sure. We could play a little bit wider. On the other hand, we did create enough. And again... Let's stretch them a little bit and hope for the best. Don't want to give him a point. McManamy wins the ball. Oh, look. Come on. Loses the ball. Recovered by Badrul Hisham. Baru. Not too bad. Back to Badrul Hisham. Where's the cross? Oh, the cross. Here's the cross. That's yeah, well misplaced though. Or, but, uh, well, we might also argue that Levok uh, Chuck Stell was way out of position. And that's a corner. That's not good enough. For the next attempt. Corners taken by Matt Moore. What the? That's a central defender. Are you kidding me? This corner taking is five. That's apparently that's better than what we have. Well, better than what we had earlier. Nah, it's a bunch of corners now. It must be corner number 8 or 9. Probably corner number 9, this counts after it was taken, right? Another corner by Madnor. Third was corner number nine. Christopher finds Zakaria, McManamy. Another long shot. Come on. 
Hold on. It is fairly wide now. Zakaria for Ilburg. Back to Zakaria. Play the pass towards McManamy. That's the wrong one. There's a chance there. Looking at this, seems like their right defender Trumat seems to be really exhausted. Same as Mazelan. We could try to go down the left. Or no. Given the exhaustion. So it's this one that's really exhausted. Which also means that this space needs to be attacked in general. This Hisham person. He's not that slow, but he's not that pacey either. Positioning is 7. RC, could you please do the honors? So we'll try to um, focus less on some sort of overlap, bring a fresh resource on the pitch, and try to make, uh, make him go for a run there. They had a chance. It was a bad one, but they had a chance. I'm still annoyed that we conceded. Oh, got Rubisham again. Go to cross. RC. Crossbar. Second time. I don't know what's going on here. By the way, the youngster didn't really do anything wrong so far. Zakaria, Diego, Arce, that's the correct player, yeah, that's true. Uh, it's the internet. I'm, I didn't drop a single frame for, so far. Um, there's, OBS has a frame counter. I, I will gl uh, gladly send you a screenshot, it's zero so far. The frames dropped. So, um, yeah, sorry, it must be the internet. On the other hand, um, I'm quite happy that it is this way. I have no idea what happens if I drop frames, usually. Because um, I'm just used to the fact that the connection works and it's fine. If it doesn't, I wouldn't know what to do. This is offside, isn't it? Yes, of course it is. Did they sub anyone on? Not really. Yeah, well, they did. In midfield. Doesn't matter. It's too much, though. Hmm. You know what? Well, yeah, thanks, man. Thanks. I'm not sure what to do. Thank you very much. That's uh, really concerning, actually. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> well, if it if it was on my end, we would have a problem. Uh, I think Elbok can come off. We'll try something else. How fast is Da Costa Lima? That will be fine. We'll try this. McManamy isn't slow either. And we will... Pass into space. So I still think there's an opportunity for Harsi here to find some space. So we will keep this on, but I also want to bring in, bring on some pace. And um, given that these players are more or less well, they are not exhausted specifically, and he's rather pacey, but they are somewhat tired. 
So our younger players that have some pace should have a good uh, chance to go up against them. That said, the floated crosses will definitely need to be taken off. We now need low crosses. Nobody here can jump for the ball anymore. At least um, as far as I'm aware. But on the other hand, with all the exhaustion comes also some sort of mental uh, tiredness, I guess. That's our new striker. Not too bad. That's exactly what I wanted. Yes. Works immediately. Slow and steady. I didn't expect to pass by Matt Moore, but whatever. I'm really happy for McManamy. He had a hard time recently at the club, so that's definitely an argument that I wanted to see. And now, we will be a little bit cautious, I guess. Maybe waste some time. That should do. Still focusing on Don Harsey's side, obviously. Mm, not bad. Yeah, the works fine, by the way. Um, if it had passed the central defender, it would have been the perfect opportunity for Van Lalde to uh, pick Agreed. I don't know what's going on there. This is definitely not a low cross. Korea, uh, nice one, nice one. Can we praise them way better now? Fire away, guys. I want a third. RC, oh, that's useless. The Costa Lima on the ball now. Not bad. Too far. Mazrin down the left. Wins the ball. And also apparently Chumat is now hurt. What a pity. Martin Moore does his defending in midfield now. I'm not sure if I should be excited or annoyed. Good. He is not known as a passer. Zakaria is... Da Costa Lima, not bad. The corner. To be honest, I don't know if I expected more from, uh, from Da Costa Lima, in particular. RC though. How about a nice corner? Right. Great. Five minutes. Five minutes left. Yes, great. He's fast. Doesn't run though. Not a bad pass. Da Costa Lima. Back to Badrul Hisham. Mazrin. Zakaria. Of course. Why not? Four points of long shots. And I think an appropriate amount of finishing too. So basically nothing. Still he hit it. Control of the match is way better now, despite being a little bit more aggressive. Well, it, it's weird. Passing into space and also being cautious. So we try to exploit the open spaces a little bit more, whilst at the same time being cautious about possession. And at this point... more is judged to block the keeper's view. Masarin does his defending in midfield. All right. It's a uh, career. 
that's for a player that has I think one point of passing this is a great pass gotta give him that it's also not a short simple pass definitely not there was no chance there I don't know 18 to 5 shots and yet another corner Well, it's two and a half minutes plus stoppage time. Good offside. Our players need off the ball movement in anticipation. They just can't seem to time their passes in the attacking board. Well done, Mahasi. We do find Harsi this time. Uh, what's going on here? This is the, uh, the midfielder, by the way. Mazarin is marked by Jumat. So, we took a man out of midfield by playing down the left. It's weird. Um, down the left again. Mazarin with the cross. One minute. Can we make it? Well, I, I guess it's three minutes. No. That was a really bad pass. We were lucky that they didn't pick up on it. Zachary, uh, we don't have any more substitutes, do we? Nope. Brought on a few youngsters. And it worked, I might add. Zachary... Uh, Da Costa Lima. Well, one lal pick, I good, I think it is. Badro Hisham. And maybe Harsi? Not Harsi. Two minutes. Diego. Nazrin. Zakaria. Don't. Don't you dare. Knock him over. Alright, it's a corner. We will do very defensive, you know, because why not get stuck in, trigger the press slightly more often, make sure they don't have a chance and please, please don't give away a penalty now. Or go for that matter. Yeah, that's fine. This is really the first yellow card of a match, won't it be? No? Okay. Should have done that much earlier. Well done. 30 seconds. That should be the last scene. We will praise them again, hope that it works. It does. Now we only need to make sure that it actually also works on the pitch. Well done. Is it another throw in or is it at the end of the match? I want to quote a fascist orange here. Up the count. You gotta be. Don't you dare. Oh, come on. That's not fair. This is so absurd. In the last second of the stoppage time. Apparently we are playing by a Leverkus today. Well. It'll be the match.
a draw in the last second. This is my fault now, shouldn't have changed the tactics. <laughs> I don't know what to say. So, his performance was shit. Could have saved this. He went off because he wasn't doing well. And I think it's probably the same for these two. Actually, for all of them. Alright. Let's do a short break and afterwards we will... Uh, see. Here be. So there's an issue here. Hailbuck wants a new deal. I would happily give him one, but I cannot afford this amount of money. And I think... Yeah. In, in fact, I can't even afford to give him a new contract, because he is under contract until the end of 2027. And that's just not possible. I will not ask him to sack his agent. Even though, oh no, the agent likes me. So, let's talk about this. Mm, well, shit. I want him to be a star player, let not. We can't afford that. We really can't. We have him on 300 a week now. The maximum we can afford is 375. So, what's his current contract? 300, we bribed the agent, and a bunch of performance bonuses, sure. Okay, you know what? We'll try with the existing contract, and obviously we will bribe the agent again. Can't afford more than 600 euros. Loyalty bonus, let's make it 750. We will not win the cup, and if we do, it's fine. That's alright. This isn't. Maybe something like this. But he will not accept it. Ooh. Oh. Okay. So maybe we will get a deal after all. You can have all the money I can find. So we will increase his base wage a little bit. Give him an, appear, uh, an increased appearance fee and an increased gold bonus. The gold bonus he can keep, as long as he keeps scoring. Excuse me? Hi. Name's Chris. I, I think I'm quite visible. What do you think, Chair Nullet? How much can we it, can we offer Ilbuck? He wants 500 euros a week. We can't afford that. Maximum is 375. Shall we go um, all the way until... Uh, in, in German they say until pain barrier. Not sure if that's an English thing. He wouldn't even extend his contract for this, by the way. It's just additional money so the player remains happy. You think we should do this? On the other hand, if there's any player in the squad that deserves additional money for his... Uh... Oh. Sixteen goals in nineteen matches. That's that 
I, I guess the question is, it's, well, I can't afford 400. So we'll try to let it drift towards 400. Maybe we can, I don't know, agree on 350 or something. I do not expect it, though. And if he becomes... You know what? If he's top gold scorer, I'll give him an additional thousand. This is dangerous, he will probably get it. But to be honest, as long as he performs, I'm willing to part with that money. And also, um, there's, there's a situation that the top gold scorer bonus is paid at the end of the season. So, the money can do something throughout the season in the bank. So this is better than paying him per goal by definition. He wants a significantly better offer. Let's make it 350. Throw money at the agent because we can. He can have the appearance fee. He can have this. And I will also increase this bonus to 1.5. And if we win the cup, he, win, he can have another additional 1.5. Also, I will increase this bonus to 750 and this to 2.5k. That's a ton of money, but I'd rather pay it on, a perform on performances. He might be hurt the entirety of 2027. Well, but why? I can do this later. We're trying to, to make him agree right now. And I can try to drop them later. The, the base wage is he gets paid if he's injured or not, if he performs or not. I don't like this. I'd rather pay him at the end of the season or at, at well, this is, some, this is a form of hatching, right? In case we win the Shoe PP a la FA. But the two, well, first of all, it's a loyalty bonus um, in, in this case given that he's already on the contract. But the 2k loyalty uh, or signing bonus would need to be paid um, throughout the season, um, whatever happens. So that's good for the employee, not good for the, for the club. Why would that be any better than, um, than the performance-based fees? I just don't get it. So um, I have some time. If you don't mind, please explain your opinion. Like, honestly, I, I don't get it. Yes, that's true and all. I, but it doesn't answer my question. I mean, obviously, I can offer him from. I can't just throw money at him. But that's not what I want to do. I want to find a contract that's. Well, not necessarily optimal for us. I, I don't think any contract in this, uh, on this level um, of pay is optimal for us. But I want to find something that hedges the risk, basically. There's the risk of underperformance, for example. If he doesn't perform well, I'd rather not have him on 450 euros. Yeah, it's strictly speaking, all of this is a one-time amount. It just there's just a question of when it gets paid. So the wage, for example, gets paid throughout the season, right? That week in a weekly interval. Um, the loyalty bonus gets paid on a weekly interval too. It is stretched throughout the season again. It's just another budget. Okay, I think it comes from a transfer budget or something. I don't know. We don't have that, so it barely matters. The agent fee is definitely paid from the transfer budget, if I recall correctly. The rest of these is paid in accordance to the performance. So if he doesn't make an appearance, he doesn't get an appearance fee. I mean, you know all of this. It's box standard contract stuff, at least in FM. 
So I'd rather pay performance based. How, how do I put this? I'd rather pay 2k uh, tied to performances than 1.5k for sure. Just because that guarantees that the performances have been well. And in that case, we have that money. So, for example, if we win the shoe PPL up here, FA, I don't know what the prize money is uh, from the top of my head, but it would probably be, we can probably afford 1.5k at this point. In fact, we could probably slap in an additional, I don't know. No. Apparently we can't. Yeah, I'll, I will offer it like this. You, I don't know, you, you might have a different opinion. That's wage budget. The the way so you you have it right I think so the wage influences the wage budget by exactly what well whatever an increase in twenty five uh, um, per week increases the wage budget cost by twenty five per week but the payroll budget or the wage budget is also increased by this stuff it doesn't matter. The wage budget is influenced by both. That said, this expense is for sure, this expense fluctuates. Like, there is an expected goals amount that influences the wage budget. So, we might pay more. Um, say, we slap in, I don't know, a gold bonus of 200 euros here. Wage budget will go up, a wage budget cost. But if he scores a lot, obviously the real cost is way higher than what was expected by the wage budget cost. On the other hand, if it's the other way around, we basically pay less. But the impact on the wage budget um, from from where the funds are allocated here is um, it's the same, basically. In fact, I think football manager judges um, if they sign a contract or not by the wage budget. So, throwing money here... Sure. Yes. That said, I think he will make it. But if he does, I don't care, right? So we throw in another, another one and a half K and he gets the increase in base wage. We can't go any further anyway. So that's a wage increase of 75 euros. I will try it like this once more. We offered one and a half K on, on top. Yes, yes, that, that is my sentiment. In fact, for example, I think he will make the, the seasonal landmark goal bonus this season. 20 goals, he will get there. He's at 16 now. So we will pay him an additional 2.5k. But what does it matter? Season's nearly over. We can afford the additional 2.5k. And if he doesn't make it, that's fine. Like, whatever. If, if he stops at 19 at the end of the season as shit, at least we don't pay that money. But I'd rather pay him this than a base wage for an additional year. Because next year, who's telling me he will score more than 10 goals? I don't know. Who knows? Maybe we use him as a defender. Obviously we won't, but theoretically. Okay, we need to make some progress, he says. So, it's just not good enough. Now we need to come up with something that doesn't uh, involve the wage here, but includes the bonuses a little bit. So 25 goals is really... Even in this season it is unlikely. If he makes it, okay. We will increase this to 2k each. I hate throwing that much money performance-based out. That's a ton of money, so probably um, the increase in base wage at this point would be reasonable too. But... The base wage, if we negotiate a second time or a third time for this deal, that will not be reduced. No way. He's pleased that we've almost reached a deal. So we gamble. We gamble. Ooh. 
<sighs> okay. Time for a short break and I will uh, renegotiate this deal for a few um, times. I'll, I'll re uh, try to reduce all of the stuff now. And to be fair, some of it might uh, go away. That said, um, Twitch has been pestering me uh, to play an ad for like 10 minutes now. So, you know, one coming up right now. That can go away. I think the loyalty bonus is probably not needed. It is needed to this extent. Shit. But the under substitute fee, um, he might be on the bench from time to time. I will not reduce the agent fee. He will not accept the l lowering the wage appearance fee. No. And neither will he accept the fact that we reduced the gold scoring bonus, will he? Nope. So that leaves us with the real performance-based stuff, like this. He insists. That's better. So, where was it? 750 or something? Apparently he insists on the bonus, but not on the magnitude. So let's reduce it a little bit. See how low can we go. 850. Still 450 per week, by the way. He doesn't mind the top gold scorer bonus. I guess the question is, does he want it at all? He doesn't mind. Nice. Team of the year bonus for the division. He does mind. But it's way better already. Because top gold scorer he might just achieve. Given the way he played recently. Okay, 1.6k. Fine. That leaves us with the performance-based fee for winning the Shupi Piala FA. So we will try to reduce this too. This is why agents hate me, by the way. In case you're wondering. It's good for the club, though. Does he care at all? No, he doesn't. Fantastic. So, still 450. That's it. I could reduce the agent fee, but it would go to the detriment of our relationship. I'd rather not. Maybe a little bit. He likes me a little bit, right? The 25 euros probably don't matter much. Okay. It's money after all. So that'll increase his wage by quite a bit. Right. Oh yeah, we do. We do. Well, I can certainly say who's lagging. Oh, this is making fun of me and my negotiation. I see. Well, I guess I deserve this. Uh, I had the ad, uh, uh, the odd uh, bad conversation on the internet today, so I guess um, thank you very much for making me laugh. This is why I enjoy streaming for you guys. It's usually 
I don't know. There's, there's not that much trolling and stuff around here in the channel. And in the stream. So I liked, I very much like that. Next, Keda 10. Did I mention that I hate this? Conceding two goals, the last one in the last second. How the hell did that happen? So annoying. Let me just save this for a second. I don't trust the menu I'm going uh, to right now. No. No, I don't. But... I'm really trying to learn this stuff. I think I brought it up recently. Just, I didn't even read the book in full just yet. But let me just say, um, how do I put this? Negotiating is very much about the human at the other side. And usually, usually it comes down to what they need, what they actually need, what they actually want, and adhering to their feelings in a way, at least for me. So... But that's uh, that's also um I guess in line with say customer relationships for me or something. Hopefully none of my well my former customers, our former customers um ever see this, but well it's not it's not bad if they do. Um, I think having a good uh, relationship with a customer is really important, and also with uh, your colleagues and and so on. But that comes down to having some empathy for what they actually need. What? We could part company with McManamy. Yeah, that's true. Also, we could extend his contract. Or not. Depends. Nobody else wants him, so why would we extend the contract now? We're not sure yet. He might break his leg. And, well... Given the fact that he's very susceptible to injury, that's likely. If he doesn't, he will remain for the next season, maybe. What about... No, it's about Ankun again. Okay. So, question is, do we want to upset Ankun? I think. He wants to commit his future to the club. Well, I would want so too, but if I recall correctly... Where the hell is the agent? Here. He wanted way too much money. So for 250, I would be fine with that. No. He's not been around for five years. Mega Man and me. He completed 563 days. He needs an additional 1.2k days. So he's not even been here for two years. I think the longest term in that. From that perspective, that has been completed. So obviously not uh, Juan Servin. So Servin? Ser Servin? I don't know. I forgot. Uh, Ahmad hasn't been around that much. Elbog, 643 days completed. Still needs 1182, so few years. Way too long. I think that's it. No. Um, also, what, what's with Chinsu Sum? Where is he? He was too old, I think. Not sure how it works. That or maybe one of the nationalities here doesn't allow for... Well, I guess he already has dual citizenship. Uh, it's not a thing anymore. Um, in this case... I think I'll do something I never do. I'll decline the interview. Because it will just upset the players. Let's not do this.
We'll find out soon enough. And to be honest, I can live uh, with the perspective that we part ways with Ankun, even though he's leader in the squad. That's something that I, uh, emotionally at least, I have uh, accepted this already. I cannot accept the bitch fight now for the end of the season about a new contract and paying him 500 euros a week too. Because Ankun's performances are not Elbok level. Not by any stretch of the imagination. He's been okay, but not that great. So, yeah. True. True. Given that he's from Hong Kong. <sighs> Just in the cup. Staff contracts expiring. So that one's rather easy. He's a bad manager, but it's better than none. So we can probably renegotiate this. The fitness coach, though. We need that fitness coach, don't we? We can't sign anyone else anyway. So he would need a new contract immediately. Even though the mentals are really bad. But I think this is reasonable. Alright, let's do this. We are targeting 230. Fuck off. Fine. These players, well, to be honest, none of the... They might have the potential to play in the first team, like Jafar. Then again, there's a personality situation here. Saidi... Not impressed. Arsing... Um, um, we didn't really play him so far. I can hardly tell. There's probably material out there that is better for that amount of money. Or at least similar. He's not that impressive. And I spent too much money on young players anyway that don't deser uh, deserve it. Um, in particular, for example, those that are on 70 euros a week right now that are foreign players. There's no use for that. So... Um, say that's the likes of McManamy, but in particular Da Costa Lima, as well as um, was it Ahmad? It's also Ahmad for the attacking midfielder. Yes, they have potential, but for example, Ahmad will have a hard time breaking into the first team next season, given that uh, the Mexicans there, um, Serbin, 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 it is anyway, um. I have a really hard time pronouncing all of the different languages. So yeah, um, attacking midfield uh, is pretty much covered. I do not think Ahmad will play. We could end up in a situation that Ahmad needs to play in another position, but he's no good at it. So 70 euros a week is a lot of money for somebody that's not needed. And the loss of 20k this season certainly doesn't help. Uh, well, not this season. This month certainly doesn't help. Yes, I, I think McManamy for 70 is okay. Like, I'm, I'm not complaining. But keep in mind, it, it doesn't show anymore because we can't have a physio. But keep in mind, he's highly susceptible to injury. This is a glass cannon. And, well, the, the cannon is... Um, It's not high quality after all. It's a middle of the road player that is highly susceptible to break. Also, it might show in his development. 
So obviously we didn't train him as a midfielder. Or as a central midfielder on attack. We didn't train him like this for the majority of the time. That said, there's barely any improvement in any of these. Uh, so that's his. the status quo is probably what he will end up as. That's not horrible. This is like, if he improves a tiny little bit, that's Diego level. Good question. Um, well, to be frank, I think somebody will be found that can play in midfield if it comes to it. So, for now, I assume that Diego and or Ankun will be available. I also assume that we will find a lone player if it comes to it. If it doesn't, there's a bunch of players in the under-19s, I get that normal view here, that have contract expiring 2012, well, later than 2026. Uh, like, these here might leave. Emphasis on might. They might also run out of contract and we keep them, but there's no midfielder in here anyway. And the rest of them, either we throw them out on loan again if we can, like, uh, for example, Malik would be an appropriate choice for midfield too. If we compare this to McManamy, for example. Uh, it's just different players, isn't it? But if worst comes to it, Malik can do the job here. Why not? He's not even that bad playing the same role. So, uh, I guess the question is, are the 70 euros per week for McManamy really that good? I'm not saying it's a bad choice. He's fairly cheap right now, the way he is. If he plays in the first team, we will need he will need an increase in wage. But there's enough players here to put somebody on the pitch. And I'm not sure if we want to cover McManamy or McManamy's injury. Um, ideally, obviously, but ideally, I would want another player. Bakrula, more determination, more controversy, and can't control himself that well anymore. Mod Nizam, Mod Isha, temperament has improved, more focused, less controversial, and more determined. This is a great development personality wise. He's still an ambitious though, and contract runs out, to be honest. Yep. Not much to say. <sighs> There's also the question. So you might not like this. But McManamy is a central midfielder. McManamy doesn't have the skill, in particular the dribbling skill, to play in attacking midfield. McManamy is not a fantastic passer, he has 8 points of passing. He's okay. Obviously he has some parts of what's needed for a playmaker-ish type, but he has the pace but not the technical um, skill to play in attacking midfield. And neither does he have the defensive capabilities to play further in, in the back. Or the balance for that matter. I think he has two points of balance or something. So we will have a hard time finding a, a spot for him in a, in a 4 2 3 1, for example. In particular, the way we want to set it up. And we do know that Juan Servin needs to play an attacking midfield, as a shadow striker in particular. Um, like, there's a debate going on if we want to have it, but um, he's not a fantastic passer. He has really great off the ball movement though, and it's uh, very likely that we'll play, we'll play him like this because he needs to run with the ball because he has good dribbling and he needs to try to attack the space due to his off the ball movement and the work rate. So I think Van Servin will um, really be a good choice if we play him in attacking midfield, which also means 
that it's highly unlikely that we will play central midfielders all the time. Just... Well, just because I expect Zakaria to play Segunda Volante. And then we will find a ball winning midfielder and... Well... McManamy is not the one. So... Different tactic, most likely. It's not unheard of, though. It's one, basically one of the tactics we already have. We just don't play it yet because uh, Juan Servin is not available to be played in the league yet next season. In the cup, though, we might play him. A Belarusian goalkeeper. Sure. Well, if you come over for a trial, then maybe. Otherwise, not so much. Elbock gets a new contract. We did increase the wage by 50 euros and a bunch of bonuses got improved. That's it. No issues with a uh, player that's uh, not content. So that's not bad. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, let's throw him to the under 21s for now. And him too, actually. I don't think we need him. Okay, done. So I will stick to this. And I want to have a look at something. If I go to view match here and look at the stats. So statistically speaking, we shouldn't have conceded two goals. That was highly unlikely to happen. The expected goals history also says we were really unlucky. This might be my fault for going very defensive in the last minute. I... Then again, very defensive doesn't say drop back all the time. It really doesn't. The hard tackles might have given away the free kick that we conceded basically in the last seconds of the match. Might have developed otherwise. But maybe that's overinterpretation. I don't know. So I have a hard time accepting that this, that this was tactically wrong, right? 2.77 versus 0 0.5 definitely says we had a good match overall. Like, as it says here, fantastic performance, theoretically. The result, though, is, um, well, it's gutting. What about the other ones that didn't go well? We lost this one. And in this situation, it was well deserved that we lost it. That said, I mean, we, we played young players and didn't care about the result because we had a lead of four goals. It was the second leg of the cup match. So I don't want to put too much into this. It was a horrible match, though. Then again, you've played. The one against Terengganu? First half was shit. Second half was way better. Well, debatable. We did rotate quite a lot though. Um, due to necessity, I think. So I'm not sure if I would interpret this as bad tactic. And then there's the match against Zembelin. Again, for for me, this goes down as we sh like on I don't know seven or eight out of ten days we probably would have won this by one goal, but we would have won this. So I have a hard time accepting that the tactic is to blame. And that's the last few matches that didn't go well. So. Is this a statistical fluke? We also managed to get a draw against Selangor. Just look at it. 11 to 2 shots. Same here. Like, we, we don't have an expected goal story anymore, but 0 0.83 to 0 0.21. It's not too bad, is it? 
they barely had a shot. So I, I still think the tactic is fine, it's just the result. And I dislike this because it's a crisis of results in the end, to me. But I don't know what to change. We could try to change something, but it would probably go to the detriment of something else. And then uh, we score a goal and concede two. Or we sit it out and hope for, I don't know, some sort of better performance going forward, despite not changing much. And I'm not sure if that's... Is that likely? So, there's one player's performance though that wasn't well, uh, well in the last two matches. And I think he can sit this one out. We'll tell him. So, the passing was fine, but he conceded too. He had his time, he performed well in that time. And apparently, now there's an issue. So if there's an issue, we will tell him. And I don't have the time to wait until he recovers. I don't expect Mochalil to do anything uh, any better, but that will definitely um, serve as a reminder that Mochalil has a chance. Like, if he starts to perform all of a sudden, I will not care. That's alright. Then he can have the um, primary spot for the goalkeeper. So, that's his chance to win it back. Conduct has been okay-ish. No issues. Training has been, I guess for his level this is fine. 7.1 is uh, approximately the best I've ever seen him. What's for Badrul Hisham? 7.0 last time out. There's barely a reason to play the lone player in this kind of form. In fact, it's 7.6. Alright. So, he had the assist. Did create a few chances. 7.42 for the form. I think we can place the form here. Alright. How long is it? Uh, one more day. Macrula's performances recently have dropped off too. 6.8 and a 6.4. In particular, the last one is concerning. Look at that headers one. Ouch. So, I guess we will criticize this. Yep. I hope you do. He is somewhat lucky that the only replacement we have that is realistic is Modfazal Madnor. Given that we sold Carrier. That said, this guy played last time out and he had an assist and a 7.0 rating. Sure, the assist is. Well, I guess it was a corner, wasn't it? But. For a debut for a. 18 year old. That's not too shabby. I expected way less. So, well, let's give him some additional appearances from the bench, I think. And keep it like this. Mahar seems to have slightly recovered last time, 6.5 anyway. But despite the fact that I think he didn't do that badly. There's issue as we can see the two goals, so we will tell him. I hope that doesn't go down. Uh, well, it doesn't go south. Do they say it it goes down badly? I'm not sure. Well, any anyway, I I don't think the defensive performance is fine. Like I know that his tackling and all are okay, but we can see the two goals. We need more interceptions. Better movement, better marking, better positioning in particular in his case. Might also be that's the wrong person. Might also be um well composure is fine though. I'm not sure. Mazarin. So apparently Mazarin's concentration improved, it's great and all, but it doesn't help us much. Seven point one last time out. 
Mazarin is not a problem right now. He's been better, but uh, yeah. I think we can continue playing him. I do not see an opportunity for Kamarunin to come in just now. In fact, he's getting worse and worse, and I don't know why. Like, he improved a little bit here, then we gave him some playing time, and now he drops off. I don't know what's going on. And to be honest, I don't care. He will leave anyway. So, no use giving him playing time if I don't have to. It's. Funnily enough, it's a similar situation with Zakaria. This is better, but I've seen even better from him. Can we praise his tackling, maybe? I think he's an influ in influential player at these days. Yes. He might turn highly influential all of a sudden at some point. I'm not sure if this is sorted, by the way. Sometimes I think it is. Uh, well, yes and no. Um, so the sink situation is... To be... Well, let me be straight with you. Um, so if we compare Kamarudin, where the hell is he? If we compare these two, I'd rather have Kamarudin on the bench. But this has nothing to do with development anymore. That's just due to the fact that Kamarudin might be needed as a drop-in player. Um, in particular, Kamarudin can play in some of the other positions too, if it comes to it. At least for, I don't know, 15 minutes or something. He won't be great, but he will be way better than Singh. In, com in particular in the defensive areas. And I don't even have to compare the attributes here. He's just Sing is, or uh, however it's pronounced, Harsh Sing is not a good uh, defender. So, and neither is he a good attacker, I think. Um, so, he's pacey, but if I don't change my mind, he might need to leave. On the other hand, throughout the rest of the season, if we want to win matches, and maybe shut up shop from time to time. Kamarudin's probably the better choice, even though I'm not excited by the prospect of playing him long term, because I can't keep him. Is he? No, he isn't. Um, that's his regular contract that runs until the end of this uh, end of 2028. We could also theoretically play Kamarudin um, in the next match, given that. Uh, it, it's going against his uh, his parent club, but or I don't know the real. I, I guess the club we loaned him from, whatever that's pronounced as. But we could try to extend his loan. He didn't develop much. We barely pay him, so he's well worth this money, even though. It doesn't generate value for us, if that makes sense. Like, no resale value whatsoever. So if we find somebody else that could develop there, and that is on this level, it's a good idea to get rid of him and get somebody else in. On the other hand, for 7 euros a week, financially speaking, this is a good bargain. Even though he's not perfect. Yeah, and it also comes down to maybe the professional personality and all that stuff. Even if this influences, I don't know, five players throughout the squad a little bit, that is well worth it, in a way. Because, you know, there's knock-on effects and so on. These, again, uh, will influence other players with a slight increase in professionalism, and that's what we're going for. So I think he's the better choice on the bench. Despite not being a good signing, uh, well, it, he would be an acceptable signing long term, I think, but doesn't develop much. Yeah, well, I, I talked about uh, why I think this is the right setup for five minutes. You didn't ask for it in the detail. Sorry. Um, still. 
Like Aria's performance did increase recently, so I'm happy with this. Ankun, he did have a reasonable long shot last time, but that's about it. Again, creativity was lackluster. Given that we played against a team with a, with three men in the back, Yeah, I'll get to it. So, I think this is fairly simple. But let me, let me go through the rest, okay? Ankun's performances have dropped off, but he's club captain. I'd rather not take him off the pitch. Mega Man Enemy did play way better last time out. If Ankun doesn't perform in the first 45 minutes, we will have a decision to make going forward. Maybe he needs to sit one out or two. I'm not sure yet. Last time though, 6.6 .6 is not good enough and he just create chances. Can't warn him about it, so I guess we don't. Diego... Is this a surprise of the season for me? Diego. Training ratings okay. There is no progress whatsoever. Don't really have to talk about it. That's it. The form, this is pretty much constant, isn't it? We'll have a look at this again. Well, that's not too bad. He had this one assist against Harini. And he had this wonderful game against Fishing. That that might have been a friendly though. In the game against Cushing that mattered. This this one, it was Elbok that scored four and a half goals. So in general, though, this is very great, uh, good as a performance. In aggregate, kind of doesn't really show here. Six point eight eight only. So the first half of the season might have been way worse. For now, though, I'm happy with him. No big concerns there. Shane Thomas Baru had an acceptable match last time out. Apparently, I'm not impressed though. Then again, as you can see here, we we might argue that he was unlucky. I, I know. He also could have scored. We hit um we hit the woodwork two times last time out. I'm not sure if it was Baruda. Christopher way worse last time out. Wrong menu. Apparently the rating was the same though. Not sure. It took him off a minute seventy. Passing was good. I guess we praise him. We don't. Never mind. And then there's Elbok. Elbok scored again. He he's coming off his. How do I put this? He's a constant goal scorer these days. Look at it. There's two matches that he didn't score, and the rest of them he always scores his goal. That's worth a lot of money. The issue for me is, he seems to have forgotten how to score a second or a third. And there were opportunities in these recent matches. So, whilst I'm quite comfortable with the form, I don't know what's going on. So either this is his best, the best form he has, or this is mediocre for his level. I'm not sure. Don't want to do much about it though. And that's that's it. Um, I can't really think of um, alternatives here. So Halim versus Ahmad. Um, I'd, I'd, let me put it like this. I don't think it's worth the discussion. Um, so I I don't want to like um, brush it aside. Um, though. And. So the issue here is he has contract until twenty twenty seven. Otherwise, quite contrary to what I thought when I blindsided him, this might be at least an option for the future. Long term, but it might be an option. Personality is bad, he, he has no consistency, but he's 17 years old, so whatever. Also, Badrul Hisham is still on a non-contract. 
but Pasail Ramat is a central defender. He doesn't belong on the right side anyway. So comparing these two doesn't make much sense to me. I mean, I could, but it's just not fair. I do not expect Halim to be great in the air, and neither do I expect uh, Ahmad to be a good crosser and so on. It's more or less on accident that he, he knows how to play on the right defensive side. So I think the, the appropriate comparison is Modern Or against Ahmad. And looking at this, well, you can hopefully hopefully you can see why we play Mud Nor for now. That said, maybe one of the two will be loaned out next season. So then the other one might make an appearance. Also, if if injuries occur, obviously Fasila Mat is still the one to play. For now, though, he needs to prove, and he doesn't do it if he doesn't play. And uh, I will uh, I will not go through the rest of them. Oh fuck off. Uh. Well, I, I might as well, but we talked about Kamarudin uh, quite extensively, same McManamy. Ahmad, the other Ahmad, doesn't really improve. He's a playmaker-ish type. He's to be played in attacking midfield due to agility. Somewhat pacey. Technical level is, um, with the exception of the technique and the passing, it's... And the mentals aren't that impressive either. He has flair and vision. He's a passer. As an advanced playmaker, he is fine. In fact, I think he trains as an Engage. An Enganche, I don't know. Um, how do you pronounce this? Is it Spanish? Enganche. Enganche, I don't know. Might be. Well, in, in this situation, I think it's okay. Yeah, it does not rely on him moving that much. But on the other hand, I can't really see this for the future. So he's wasted money in a way. Sorry to say this. And same with uh, Van Lalpega. Mies will probably uh, be happy once he hears this, but... There, there's some development in him now. And there's still the issue that he can't play in another position too. So That might contribute positively. Not sure if that's worth uh, 70 euros a week though. He's not a horrible choice, on the other hand. Looking at the performances, he made 13 appearances, 6.8 rating overall. That's... I've seen worse for that amount of money. And then Dosta Costa Lima. 6.9 apparently. I would not have known. That's probably recency bias. He didn't do well recently. So, I think the lineup overall is not that bad. Yes, but um, he, he also, he has great acceleration. So he does offer something there. He's highly, highliest susceptible to injury though. I don't know why I did it. Guama turned 17. He's bound till 2028 20, anyway. Trains as a DLP for now. There, there might be a discussion to be had if we want to train him as a register. Given that's what's needed next season, most likely. No. Never mind. As a as a segunda volante, maybe. But he doesn't have the physicals for it. Then again. A Segunda Volante is more or less, it's more of a rounded role, if you want to put it that way. 
Um, he's a defensive midfielder. Some defending will need to be needed. Look at the physicals, man. You sure? Which reminds me. Diego. We might need to come up with an additional role for Diego at some point. And well, is it this? Because it will not be Shadow Striker for sure. Like I I expect us to play him in central midfield from time to time next season too. There's also the option that we play a 4-2-3-1 with two central midfielders. But that's, given our playing material, that's an interesting choice. I mean, neither of the playmaking roles really fits him. I think we I, I cannot put up uh, Segundo Volante here. That might be an idea. Because he has some defensive capabilities and marking and pos well, the positioning is not good. It's ne not even acceptable. It's below standard. Marking, though, is okay ish. Strength is. For Malaysia, this is probably not the worst I've ever seen. Um, despite being five points, he can't jump somehow. I think defensively he can contribute at least. I wouldn't necessarily want to rely on him for playmaker-ish duties. But as it usually is with central midfielders that do not have a specific focus necessarily, we can probably use him in another way. Well, yeah. CM on attack obviously works too. In a way. It's not fantastic though. And um... We can re-educate him to, through playing him a little bit more. That's also still the opportunity to do the backup up front. Like, the, the physicals are there, the off-the-ball movement's there, he can't score, but whatever. That's not really... like, we don't care. He can still do the backup for the pressing forward. And, um... If I compare this to Van Lalpeka, Guit, I never really thought about this. Um, I think enough said, isn't it? Because Diego has pace, funnily enough. Never really thought about it though. But he has pace, he has the eye to pick some something. He is way better defending as a pressing forward. So he's the better option up front if it comes to it. In a way. He's not a good attacker, but that's that's not what our strikers are about anyway this season. Despite scoring a lot. So maybe Diego is not a bad idea to keep around. And this for example I'm not sure if he's better than uh, like looking at the technicals and the mental stuff. He's not fantastic. But his contract might run out. And this is where it gets interesting. Estimated wages is eighty through hundred ten interesting too is this somebody i would want to sign on a permanent basis do we know about susceptibility to injury doesn't seem like there's anything comparison to kamarudin well there's a slight difference in pace as you can see And on the mental side, Kamarudin is great, apparently. Obviously less flexibility, different age. Hard to tell. On a permanent basis, not sure. For an additional season as a backup for Mazarin, probably not a bad choice. Definitely has the pace to make up for the lack of the rest. 
And he is he is a similar player type as Mazarin. What the hell is Mazarin here? Yeah, well, somewhat. Mazarin is really shitty in the air. That's absurdly bad. Is he worth the money? 80 to 110. It's middle of the road ish. Don't really care. I don't think so, no. Well, you. You might have a point, but Singh will probably not sign for 25 euros going forward. And. I don't think that's appropriate. There's a, overall, I think, the aggregate says there's a difference in skill. Isn't it? We can, we can also look at the specific attributes. This is the role they would play. So, Safari's faster. I, I think the physical... Well, as it says on the average, the physical side definitely goes um, Safri's way. Mental side, not so much. Safri has a very good teamwork and work rate. Gotta give him that. Determination is also good, not that it matters much. The mental attributes that matter from, I, I guess, comprehension of the match are more on the side of Safri, I think. But this probably goes towards Singh. But the technical side. Singh hardly knows how to stop a ball. Neither of them can dribble or cross. The technique of Safri at least is okay. I... I don't know. Saf Safri is not fairly pro though. No, that's definitely also a plus... Uh, not... No. Singh is not fairly pro. Safri is. But that's a plus for Safri. I mean, I, I guess in, in terms of value for money, you might have a point. Then again, Mathurin might leave because he doesn't like to um, play for less than 400 euros a week. So, who knows? I think his contract runs till 2027, though. Don't care, we don't have a scout. Uh, by the way, Sharon Nollett, I'm interested in what happened this evening, given that you uh, told me yesterday you were not, uh, you would not be around and now you are. But um, that said, um, probably don't share it on the stream if you don't want to. I'm just, in general, I'm interested. So... Okay. Um... I will do a short break now. I gotta find out something. And um might come back in a minute or two. Um I don't know. Take a walk. Um we will do that match. Um I'm quite in the mood to play some additional football manager. It's been a while and uh, most likely it will be also a while um, going forward, given that I'm not around next week. So hopefully I can uh, continue for a match or two this evening. Prior to breaking down. And um, maybe also on the weekend. But for now, I will do a one minute break or maybe two. BRB. That's the second person today that drops me a compliment in private chat. That's uh, really nice. If you don't answer them, they don't get to the sales pitch. Thanks for the follow, though. Might not... Nah. Not, not be a, a, somebody that promotes something after all. Okay. Uh, so, also read your answer, Chiron. Uh, I think that makes sense. Thank you very much. Um, so what will we do now? We need to win this next match. Also, I found a sausage. Hmm...
course preparation. Arcee's in perfect morale. You did? But don't we have something similar in Germany? Yeah. We will we will switch to I don't know which one is daylight savings time to be honest. Um we will switch to summer time, it's called. At our yeah. No, well it's it's daylight saving time. Um we will switch to daylight saving time at Sunday, March 31st. So time zones are a mess. You've been warned. So it'll it'll be normal in two weeks. More or less. No complaints about Baru, more or less. Fine. Okay. Maharzio, same as always. Chinsu Sum trains well, but his performances have dropped off, so he will rot on the bench for now. Bakrula. I will, at, at some point, somebody will tell me that this is pronounced Bakrula or something. Mott. That's not too bad. But he doesn't really have the skill to challenge anyone right now. He would need to improve a lot. Just like Van Lalpeka. Christopher. So I guess it comes down to tactics next match. If Christopher or Harsey is the better choice for the left wing. Elbuck. No complaints. As long as he scores one goal per match, I think we'll be fine. At least we will not get relegated, and for the rest, I guess the, the 8 points something we can praise, right? Well, even from that perspective, Alim deserves an appearance. But same does Badrul Hisham, and his form has been okay-ish. This all, I will not praise anymore. You need to do better. So overall we should be fine. That's a 442, so going through the middle is the way to go, which means Christopher's on the pitch. Okay. Tactical meeting. Let's have a look at first of all, let's have a look at this. He likes to do wing play, that's it. Tactics says balance, balanced and two players are missing. Great. Good. Have a look. No, I do not want an ad now. Go away. Mm, what else? Let's start with the goalkeeper, won't we? He is not very eccentric. Overall, this is okay. One on ones are bad. Distribution in general is a bit lackluster. Anticipation slow. Not a horrible goalkeeper though. Nothing in particular comes to mind here. Other than one on ones being a bad thing for him, so counter attacks are great. Uh this guy's good. Particular the passing is concerning. Luckily he's considered to be a central defender. They play him on the right side again. I think same as last time. Um, funnily enough, I think we will show him to the outside and we will try to mark him tightly if it comes to it. Try to mark him out of the match. It seems to have worked last time with the other, um, with the central defender that was played on the left in the three man uh, partnership there. This one, most likely lower passing. 20 year old defensive midfielder with no jumping and no strength. He's not a central defender, so no tight marking on him. He does have low strength, low bravery, and 
The dribbling is most likely a six ish. Maybe two hard uh, normal tackles at least against him. So to your cheat Fernandez. What's what's with the first touch and stuff? Mm, don't know. Fernandez can't jump, no strength whatsoever though. Push him a little bit. That's it. No use marking him tightly. We want him to pass through him. And then I guess I won't do much due to the physical presence. Just keep it as it is. Romlan. It could be somewhat slow. 3 to 11 is. What is this? A 7 or an 8? Maybe. Acceleration is okay ish. Dribbling is very low. Strength is very low. Bravery is acceptable. Don't really know much about the vision or anything. Or flair. Passing is tolerable. I think we show him to the inside. He's shown to the outside, by the way. Well, that's about it. Midfielder on the right. Little. Yep. He's okay. He's 1 meter 82. So, yeah, but uh, basically they have two central defenders, but one of them doesn't play in the center. I'm... <sighs> I'm, I'm torn on this. If we look at this positioning, it's 4 to 10. The movement might also be a little bit restricted, looking at the agility and the pace. He might have a hard time um, finding the correct defensive position. So a, a low pass might put him into trouble, right? Well, that's pre-instructed. Um, I'm trying to find out if another approach is reasonable. This one, problems with uh, quickness in general. What? Um, could could you elaborate on that, Divivos? Um, I just don't under I, like I I don't understand. Maybe Jaron Nullet does, but what what kind of player rating? But that's there. It's it's from zero to two hundred. It's current ability. It's just not visible in the game. But you you have it in the editor. And uh, if you download a skin that displays it, I guess you can have a look at it, or the in-game editor, if this is something that you want. So uh, no, I don't think they will add it because it's there. But, well, no, it's it's fine. And the other thing is, um, well, let's news this again. I don't want to display an ad right now. The other thing is, um, there is also obviously the current ability and the potential ability um, uh, judged by the star rating. So this is exactly what you were going on about right now, just with some randomness on top. And this randomness is derived from the skill of your staff, right? So, as Sharon Lollet puts it, it's there. It's hidden is, I think hidden is a strong word. It's obfuscated. Like, the real rating is hidden, so he's correct. But there's an obfuscated version of it with the current ability as well as the potential, depending on the amount of time your staff had with the player, as well as their skill. So, I don't know, if your staff skill is really good, they will find out at some point what's the appropriate rating for this player right now. But there's other stuff that goes into this, um, like recent performances and, uh, I don't know, personality and stuff. Which, to be fair, influences the performances on the pitch. So, I, I would argue there's a system that's more elaborate than FIFA's. Even though, like, FIFA has been 15 years ago for me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's, I, I think skins can also display stuff like this. As, as a number, just like consistency. 
but th then again well don't want to judge anyone but for me this is some kind of cheating that makes sense it's it's not intended to be displayed that way it it takes away part of part of what's interesting about judging players by the the uncertainty if that makes sense then again there's people that want to sign a bunch of players that have 200 uh, potential or 200 current skill So what I just said in way too many words, um, sure not, it just put in text. Apparently he doesn't listen to me. <laughs> uh, all right, why would he? I'll talk way too much anyway. So this player has good off the ball movement, good passing, good vision. He's dangerous. Problem is. We can't really afford to mark him that tightly, but we will try. Not so insha. Oh, I I talk too much and and, and say uh, don't say enough, or maybe it's too complicated. Sorry. Well, um, if I phrase something uh, in in a bad way, Divi boss, please tell me. Obviously, Chera not that has a point. I tend to ramble on about stuff. Really bad dribbling in spring. But, again, guy's dangerous. I'll meet. Uh, barely worth mentioning. So we show him to the outside. Definitely not marking him tightly, but trigger the press on him. He's bad receiving the ball. He's bad keeping it. He's bad playing a good pass. He's a good opportunity to win back the ball. Well, given that she's purely imaginary, you can... um. Imagine whatever you want for that person. She's everything at the same time. For a striker, this one is fairly susceptible to physical force. Dribbling's 5, Bravery is 4 to 9, so let's make that a 7 at best. Strength is 4. First touch is okay. But I think this is a case of a hard tackle if I've ever seen any. And then there's this one. Dribbling's way better. Not much to do here. I don't know what. Um, low crosses is not really a choice, I think. I'm, I'm not comfortable with it anyway. Uh, I think we'll go with mixed. Well, um, I tend to do that in private life from time to time. So we'll keep it as it is. We'll get into this menu. Depends on how you play. And obviously also the, the machine. Uh... We'll turn it around. I will do the ad break first and then we will do the team talk. I don't have the time. Here be. Alright, the V-Boss, you can find out if you are really interested in it. Um, so about how long I take. Um, just um, try to... There's a playlist on YouTube. Uh, maybe I will look later. Um, just try to pull up an example um, season. Uh, skip through the YouTube videos until you find the one where I start a new season. And um, just skip through it until you find uh, where I wrap up the season. But that's on stream. Assuming I would play off stream, it's even worse. 
and I will explain this for even longer. It, it's not worse for me. Like, I don't... Oh, how do I put this? If I w wasn't on stream... Um, well, first of all, this. But, um... I do fiddle with all the details, basically. Um, just, uh, just pull a random stream from Twitch and look at the way they set up their training schedules, for example. They don't do that. They don't bother. Um, or... I think about the amount of time I put into specific contracts because I want to fiddle with the financial situation of the club and improve it by 25 euros. Others don't do that. That said, others don't manage clubs that are in a financial situation like mine. They just don't care. They don't want to deal with this. So, as a result, I think it kind of... It, it's kind of needed for me and my playing style. It's just the way I do things. And then, um, just as an additional argument, if I were to play solo without the stream, I would need 400 hours a season. Because at this point, I wouldn't feel pressured going into the next match. So I tend to look into analytical detail uh, data even more. And usually I throw up some sort of TV series or whatever, online series. Um, some critical role or something on the second screen. So it's kind of 50-50. I follow critical role on one screen and I play football manager on the other. Football manager doesn't care if I need an additional two hours for it. So that's entirely appropriate. But it also means that I cannot really consume with one screen anymore. In fact, I usually use all three, because watching Critical Role, playing Football Manager, Google for Football Manager, for player roles, uh, Guide to FM Open, I don't know, Discord server stuff. That's that's usual uh, consumption for me, solo. So I guess it makes sense that I would need three or four hundred hours for it. But it's not focused play, if that makes sense. Or if it is, it's um, well reflected. If you want to phrase it positively. Anyway, I'm wasting time already. So, I need a better assault here. And revenge is definitely on the table. So, we will do this. Apparently, we lost last time. Well, Jalil will make an appearance on the pitch today. Not bad. Is there anything here? Did you did you play a whole season already, Devi Boss? Yeah, you did, right? So, I guess the question is, how long did your season take you, the last one? Uh, mm, not necessarily, but the way the assistant manager sets it up is... Okay. Um, so, average, at least according to Chera Knowledge, which uh, is, there, there's no judging yet. Um, it depends. If you have a player and you want to re-educate him to be something else, playing him all the time in a specific role on a pitch that he's not used to and doesn't get training for doesn't make sense. So you would need to do that manually. And in that situation you won't take over the training. That uh, happens quite a lot for me. Sometimes... Um, uh, sometimes you don't agree with the way the assistant management uh, sets up the stuff. Take the shot! Nice! Not bad. Off to a great start so far. Hopefully we will, we will get a similar performance as last time and a better result this time. We definitely need three points today. Somebody wanted me to, uh, to push for promotion. We got a draw in the last match, so that's not looking well. Not bad. Don't lose it. He doesn't. There you go. Elbug. Ankun. Nice pass. Not a killer ball necessarily. Uh, yes. Um, 
there's there's a guide somewhere um are you let me see if i can get the link or maybe chair no okay um there's a guide on the discord server that somebody linked at some point what's that for <laughs> thanks for putting that straight over my head you you discovered the fact that you can place the stickers now didn't you thank you um so um i i don't want to search now on the discord server for the link but there was a nice youtube video that basically um is a comprehensive overview over the correct way to shout and i agree 99 percent with it it, it might have been shared by me but i'm not 100 percent sure so if somebody reminds me later um i will search for it and link it to you or you might just join the discord if you didn't and uh, have a look for it yourself if you don't want to wait i i just don't want to interrupt the stream for 10 minutes now to search for it it's been a while then again you can search for youtube i guess on the discord server thanks man um but um basically i, I cannot really tell you much more than the youtube video does and i follow them um, yeah this instruction more or less oh no christopher don't do that to me yeah but but praise with a one goal lead is a dangerous one um same as encouraged with a with a one goal lead is probably bad most of the time and um shouts like concentrate uh but i don't know there was show more passion at some point doesn't exist anymore does it there, there's a few shouts that are fairly dangerous to use um if you are behind like at least by two goals b rate is great but basically the per the players need to have really bad performance to accept that berating is the correct way to treat them yeah but uh, as i said berate is something that that's usable but only if you lose and in particular if you, if you are uh, as i said two goals behind usually works and in these, these middle of the roads um all, always there's um there's nothing bad from shouting too much come on take the shot what the hell i'm doing going on with him by the way hampered by injury why We'll do something useless so this is a 442 contrary to what one would expect i will not play harsi i'll bring on vandal puka guid he will also play as an over winger on attack drudelmore is fine also he will take fewer risks shoot less often cross towards target forward cross less often and he's off tackles because he's shit at everything when the team has the ball, he also will sit narrower. I want him to go through the middle. Um, I've had my problems with demand more. Me personally. Demand more can also work um, if there's a draw, for example, and you are expected to be favorite. And um, this all has been, what whatever we uh, discussed for now, has been for the whole team. I have made good experience, well, I have had good experiences also with shouting specifically considering the player's performance. That can also work, but it's really fiddly. It's offside. No, it isn't. 
So in this uh, situation, for example, I will just go encourage. Encourage. Always go encourage. Just like here. We are doing way better. I will I will still encourage. There might be the old player that doesn't like it, but in general they like to be uh, to be encouraged. And if there's a, a team that's really well uh, well resistant to pressure and um, ambitious, you might want to go and uh, demand more, because they are ambitious anyway. So they will appreciate being challenged, and they are resistant to pressure, so they will not be stressed. But that's a very specific lineup, right? If your whole squad is very ambitious, and you have good resistance to pressure, um, like resistance to playing big matches and stuff, um, then pile on the pressure, no problem. But that's not the kind of team I have, so I don't. I have a professional team. They will give it their best whatever, but uh, they will not necessarily be very resistant to pressure. Uh, also depends on the players you have. Yeah. I phrased it <laughs> much longer. And don't be afraid to experiment with it a little bit. Um it will you will have a look at your player personalities anyway, but it it might teach you something if something goes wrong on a persistent basis with a specific player. They, they're not around. There's about like 20 people in the stadium. It's 507. This is actually good for us. This is a 40k all-seater and 500 fans is uh, not that bad. Funnily enough. <sighs> so uh, if you ever ask yourself why I tend to fiddle with all the money, that's why. Well, all the money, all the money that I don't have. Reasonable choice. Give it to Ankun. That's not Ankun, that's Zakaria, that's fine too. Ankun, Diego. Long ball by Diego, why? Thanks. So, that means I'm, I'm wrong 50% of the time. No. Probably not 50. Maybe maybe 10% of the time. I don't know. Yeah, but um, the way I tend to explain things is uh, the way I would want to have it explained usually. Because I tend to be very interested in uh, what's around it. That makes sense. Simple explanations are... Simple explanations are a good go-to thing. But... For me personally, I'm always interested in what's what accommodates the decision. For example, player personality has a big influence on how they react, but it's really hard to comprehend in detail. You're welcome. Um, so have a good night and thank you very much for um, sticking around. And don't forget about a YouTube video on the Discord server. And if you don't find it, let me know. I will look it up. Also, um, next stream will probably either be throughout the weekend or next weekend earliest. Because throughout the next week I won't be around. So, no regular stream next Monday or Friday. Well, Friday I might be, but no regular stream next, mon next Monday. That's for sure. Not bad. They did have a second choice, but a uh, chance, by the way. I don't like that. You are correct. That's why I'm not a teacher. <laughs> Maybe. Not bad. He got the ball back. He got a reasonable pass. Diego, same here. Nice one, Baru. Put it inside. He doesn't. 
Why? Why, Baru? Why would he go to the, to the byline? Or the byline. Yes, it is. It is the byline. Not bad. This is a penalty. It's a good tackle, apparently. Not a cross by Baru. Nine to two shot. Don't. No, no. Expected goals is fine. The result isn't. Feels the same as always. Yeah, it keeps you it keeps you away from work, doesn't it? <laughs> oh. Well, to be fair, um, I don't explain much these days in my current job. Previously, um, there was a lot of a, ro a lot of explaining to do. That kind of um, gave some context for most of the, the situations. So I had a lot of explaining to do. But it really depends on the recipient. Some people don't want to hear it. And there's no use explaining it to them. They don't care. So I didn't. But there's others, others that are very interested. But in that case, um, there would be much more of a dialogue. So I would ask questions more often. Not like... Streaming. Streaming is not a balanced conversation. If uh, that makes sense. So. You know what? Unacceptable. No good. He's off the pitch anyway. No good. No good. That's okay. I can live with that. This all. Not acceptable. More. Better. Put your heart on the pitch. I did demand more now, so we encourage. And hope that somebody can find the perfect opportunity here. Baru. Great. This mo What? That's, n that's not an important challenge. It's a penalty. The ball was ways away. What are they doing there? Yeah, I, I did. Same! It was about it was about uh, about trolling and uh, bullying other people online. So I basically argued that it, that, there, that um, just being online doesn't give you the right to bully other people all the time. Apparently, um, I was wrong. Obviously, I stand by it, but um, well, some people uh, some people don't seem to have or don't seem to appreciate um, being a reasonable human being online uh, if they don't they don't and i will not change them so um there's this saying it's not politically appropriate but um <laughs> i will i will just repeat it here um despite uh, maybe better being censored on the internet um the saying is, uh, arguing on the internet is like uh, winning the Special Olympics. Even if you, you win, you're still retarded. And um, obviously, um, I, like, I, I have no... Dis disrespect is not the right word. Uh, word. Um, no, not on this stream. It's all, it's all fine. In the Telegram channel. Doesn't matter. It's really not important. Um, but let, let me just say... Um, 
that I have no ill intent uh, towards people with special needs. I just like the saying anyway because it uh, gets the chest. Because arguing on the internet is useless. If somebody has a different opinion, let them have it. They, they can keep being wrong, no problem. It's a weird thing to say as a streamer, isn't it? Sure, it's offside. So, do we praise him for this performance now? I'm not sure. I would want a little bit more. On the other hand, it seems like we are well in control of the match so far. More or less, that's definitely not offside, and this is a wonderful long shot. Second long shot goal of the match. This is what I would have expected from last match. But apparently, we saved it all for today. And, well, Elbok has a horrible match. He didn't score yet. So that can't stand. Sadly, De Vivos is not around anymore, otherwise uh, he would have had a prime example of praising the team after, straight after they scored the second time. That's really easy. So, you got any additional plans today, Chirinolot? You still have the day in front of you, you're right? And uh, I guess, um, judging by your schedule, it's probably the first day off. For the last. You work on weekends, don't you? Come on! Oh! It's offside again. Yeah. True. Then again, you... <laughs> I don't know. Is it arguing what we do here? You and me? Do we argue here? Do we exchange opinions? Sure. I'm not sure if arguing is not a bit of a strong word. Well, in, uh, in that case, I'm happy to be incorrect from time to time. That's fine. Everybody makes mistakes. I don't have to be right all the time. Play the past! That's the wrong one. Oh, fuck. Why? Minute 77. Okay, we watch the end of the scene. Don't want to cho uh, choose the substitutes now. I'm way too late with this. I, was, I wasn't really concentrated. Ankun's on a yellow, Mazarin's on a yellow. Gotta deal with this. That's not horrible. Ankun. That's okay. He still needs his goal for today. God, roll Hisham. Yes. No. Neither. Fine. Okay, yeah. Um, in my defense, the difference between arguing and discussing is um, vague for some people. And I also have a problem with the language. Like, I, I get the difference between the words, but usually words between languages are not translated one to one. So, you know, it, the meaning might be a, a little bit off from German to English, too. So, being in an argument is more like being in a, in a verbal fight, right? But in, in German, it's, it has a little a different meaning. A discussion is more founded in, in facts, I think, and in proof. That makes sense. And not so much in opinions. And definitely not in emo emotions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sorry to put this uh, to put this uh, onto you. And um well. <laughs>
I'm really sorry to frustrate you. Honestly, I don't want to. Um, but I, I feel the same, if if that helps. Um, it's just a different a difference of opinion. Like, wh why doesn't he do, do X, Y, Z? And I'm like, why does he ask for X, Y, Z again? Because he knows my perspective on this. But then again, this, this is also... Uh, it's just accepting other people, isn't it? And I do appreciate it. Um, I hope it shows. I still very much enjoy it. Because different opinions are... Well, they're just important. So... That's an easy one. I'm a rooting for Mazarin, apparently. I thought so. One for one. And then... Now we're getting into the meat of things. So... I think Elbok. He's too expensive to be on the pitch at 2-0. So... Arcee makes an appearance. Actually, I have a better idea. And do this. Can't I not play pressing forward anyway? Sure, he needs time on the pitch. Hmm. As as is my rant, rambling for two hours about this minor issue. There's, there was no perfect people on this planet. And um. You know, sometimes I feel a little bit bad about I, I guess I guess that's true, but I don't have the wisdom to um really be at peace with this. Even though um I, I probably should have at my age. But I don't have it yet. I'm quite impressed by um some colleagues from time to time that really seem to have uh, the calm that you need yeah. in the job but also in life in general so yeah so we don't have anyone that can jump anymore which means low crosses just because we don't yeah, know how to deal with uh, the floating ones um, come on oh I would have hit the goal um, but I wanted to say something uh, prior to skipping through the rest of the match. Um, I I do sometimes feel bad because there's this fake thing of being a normal person, and I actually just am normal as I am in regular life. At least I I think so. It's not like I try to put up a facade or something. I can I, I don't know. Probably an improvement that I uh, do bother to, uh, to do the hair, and uh, sometimes I even shave for the stream. Rarely though, but like I'm, I'm definitely not a media person with with any respect for whatever is needed there. On the other hand, it feels like some people try to be like this, in or try to find this "I'm like you" person. Um, explicitly, and uh, sometimes uh, sometimes I feel bad about it because it could be interpreted like this. But I wouldn't know what to do or what not to do. So if it ever comes across like I'm I'm trying to adhere to to to, or to appeal to some sort of uh, general person, I don't. I just don't know how to deal with um, publicity, I guess. And uh, I'm not sure if I want to learn it, to be honest. I, I guess any skill is a positive, but I'm not sure if I want to. Well, match has been going well. And uh, given the ratings, it seems like Mochalil might make it or not. To the pitch next time. Yes, he might. He might. The clean sheet so far. Baru's on the yellow now, so Da Costa Lima makes an appearance for two minutes. If I find him. Here. Here you go. Get out there. 
sure Mars here on an additional yellow card. Is that it? That's it, isn't it? We collected four yellow cards. Second half of the match. Alright, we got the result we wanted. Yeah, I'm happy with this. It was a great win, even though it was at home, and 500 and something fans watched it. Also, you. Thank you very much for watching it. So, that's about the training. I do not think I want to deal with this. No, I don't. And we shocked the canneries. There's also canneries in England, I think. Somewhere. And now Mazarin's banned for the next match, and funnily enough, nobody else. We seem to collect the yellow cards so that everybody else can be banned at the same time. Not too bad, isn't it? Next up is Kale Rovers, away from home. And then, cup match, Cushing, cup match. Armed forces of all the clubs. Well, this one, though. Cushing at home? Money. Today, though, um, I think that's enough for today. I'm really tired. So, hopefully I can uh, do another one tomorrow. Maybe for two hours or something. Not sure yet. Yeah, but I'll wrap it up for today. Thank you very much for watching, Jaron Allard, and uh, also, thanks for TV Boss if he ever watches the end of this. I doubt it. Um, did I forget anyone? Mies. In case Mies watches this whole episode later on, thank you Mies for watching two, uh, three and a half hours. Oh, uh, yeah. Have a good... I guess it, at your place it's day, Jaron Allard. Have a nice day. And uh, we will see each other maybe tomorrow. Bye.